Chloe, you know where we are yet? <laughs> I'm not sure if she knows she's home or if she thinks we're on vacation, like when we go to my parents. What you doing? So, yeah, didn't get any painting done on day one because I was just out shopping till late night, sun went down. So we're starting today, or I'm starting today. Got all the receptacles and face plates off. I have to figure out how to take off the alarm panel. I'm sure it's a snap somewhere. These here, these are scattered around on some of the doors. It's some kid door alarm entry system thing. I don't know, completely useless to me. I'm just disconnecting it and installing blank off plates. I'll save them, you know, just in case, but I don't think it'll ever be used again. Anyway, I disconnected that. Um, whole house has tons of ethernet and coax runs. We're not gonna use them at all. I've got Google Mesh Wi-Fi going in, so I'm just gonna tuck these back in the wall and blank off those plates as well as I go around the rooms. And that should be it. I've got uh, little spots here and there that I spackled last night, got those dry. Not the major, just uh, little scrapes and screw holes and that kind of stuff, normal stuff. I do need to smooth out the edges here. They painted over, or painted in place some of the receptacles and they were doing something because half of these are loose. I, I still can't figure out what they did. They've been here a while, they're painted, but I don't know why they'd be loose and you know why you wouldn't just fix it. So I've got the threshold all set. Kick out the light there. Now it's silent, rock solid. That's the way it should have been. Here, I found when I was putting the door back in to make room for fixing that, they fixed part of the wall there. What are you doing? Right over the metal support with like this foam spackle. It does not last, it cracks, and you can't paint on it very well. So I'm gonna just uh, fix that with some good filler. Got the new light to go in. As soon as I get to the electrical panel, I'll tackle all of that. I'm just gonna button all this back up, figure out what ran to where, and probably not gonna use anything except one coax. I've got Frontier coming in for Fios, and they may not even have to touch this. It's a whole house splitter system. Uh, if anything, I think this red one is running from the garage, which runs from the junction box there to the street. So they may just run from here into the one that goes to the office where the router will be, and I'll disconnect everything else, or uh, better yet, they may just have a one-to-one -one junction and get rid of the splitter. I don't know if Fios is critical for signal-to-noise and levels with splitters like cable was. I haven't had cable internet in a while. Um, I'm just not sure. I got At the old house, I had a direct line from the Fios box in the garage around the outside through the wall into my office. So I bypassed all the house splitters that were there. So I'll let them tell me what to do. I don't care. Not using any of this old wired stuff. It is a bygone era. But nice to have back in the day, that's for sure. Although no one ever used it here. Pretty sad. All that tech, somebody paid for it. Another one of those door things out here. There's another one around there. I think it's just around the back. It probably has something to do with a pool because all these homes were pool ready. Starting to get the CO set lined up. I have an idea. I'm just laying stuff out right now. Man, those doors are heavy. I gotta lube them. Okay, so probably some plants here. I'm gonna try to mimic the old set. Torches, they'll be somewhere. I gotta figure out the distribution. I have lights on order. I've ordered multiple eight foot LED light bars. So they're gonna go from like there all the way down to there. And I'll probably use two of them. So it'll be 16 feet of LED lights for a nice soft light. It'll bounce off the white ceiling and give me a nice distribution. It'll be higher than the old setup. The old lights were like at this level here. So I'll have to check shadows. Uh, I may modify my plans and may put four foot strips down here somewhere. I don't know, might do vertical. 
Vertical may work, I don't know. We'll have to play with them and, and see, but you can see I've got perfect amount of room. This is just my shooting space over here, so it doesn't matter you know, what it looks like to the naked eye. And uh, got my landscaping lighting put in. It's charging out there right now in the sun. Got three lights on the trees back there, so yeah, something like that. We'll see. Got to adjust the height of everything when I get it set up. And that's that. Let's go back inside here. <laughs> Chloe can't quite figure out this step because it's super wide. Because it's got three tracks instead of one like she was used to. So we've been taking her in and out the bedroom door there. But she's got to figure it out sooner or later, don't you? <laughs> you don't want to though. What are you doing? The movers took my broom and left theirs. <laughs> Which is okay because theirs is better. Oh, definitely considering hiring a regular cleaning crew. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a lot of space. So I've been going around doing a lot of other little stuff. Got uh, new door stops in. For some reason, most of them are broken. Don't know why. This door is the only one that doesn't hang right. It self closes. So it's probably just not quite plumb. Might be able to put in a shim or something. Not that we'll ever use this room. I may just buy a door stop. You know, one of the, one of the ones that does that. Just to keep it open. Because, I don't know, it, this is like the third guest room. Can't imagine it getting too much use. And I'll probably just keep the door shut anyway. Just to help with the AC. Maybe just shut off that vent. Looks like they've got it mostly shut off there anyway. And we'll probably just use this as mainly storage. Except on the blue moon. Got a shower curtain coming in and rings. Just went uh, pretty much hotel quality stuff. And let's see what else so far. I'm about to go out and get some food because I'm freaking starving. It's uh, 1030. And I'll tell you, it really sucks not having a car. I got the bikes and luckily there's a McDonald's a half mile down the street right at the entrance to the complex. So I just have to literally go out in my street here, make a right and just drive a half mile down the complex road. Don't even have to really go anywhere. Uh, oh crap, I did have five. Son of a... Uh, all right, well, I changed all four <laughs> smoke detectors I, I thought I had five and then I couldn't find this one. All right, so I gotta go buy another one. But I got the other four that I found changed this morning and one of them was disconnected. So that probably explains why I didn't have a battery. They were probably sick of hearing it scream. But all they had to do is pull the wires down and reconnect them. Uh, let's see, yeah, this is the dining room. I'm not gonna be able to do the chandelier until I can get my electrical shut off. Oh, and that's what I was wondering about. Chloe would not go pee for me. And that's why she already went in the office. Chloe Bear, you ashamed? What'd you do? Is that yours? You know better than that. Anyway, I'm gonna clean that up in a second. So let's see, there's coax. Okay, so that's where the cable for the Fios will be run in. That'll work. I've got Ethernet over there. I was thinking about just having to put the modem in the closet, but that gets really inconvenient when you actually have to do anything with it. So I'll just keep it all into the office. When the wife gets home, I have a new list of stuff that I need to get. I want to get a self-coiling hose. I've got one hose tap right in the corner behind my shooting space and that's it so i don't want the hose laying out anywhere when i need to use it i want something that you know zips back up once you turn the faucet off they have them that kind of collapse i know they're not great quality and they don't last all that long but i need something that looks good and it's easy to use out there and i'll just buy one every year or whatever it lasts and oh the rug the wife told me to get for the bathroom was too long so i need to go back and get a six foot not an eight foot it's somewhere in between. Brackets here. I need to get brackets for the self-closing or the self-closing drawer sliders. Turns out there's two kinds of cabinets 
and mine are called face frame and they require these brackets here. And of course they don't tell you that on the outside of the package, you have to open it up. So the way they are installed here, oops, let me turn on the light. You've got these, see those brown hanging brackets there that the sliders clip into at the rear. Basically that's what I need, but the ones that fit the new ones. So not a big deal, but I don't have a car to go get them right now. Got the smart lock on, although I have no idea where all my batteries are packed at the moment. Runs on four double A's. Uh, quick tip, only buy in loop batteries. They're super cheap on Amazon. If you buy them in bulk, I get them in like 30, 40 at a time. Use them everywhere. They last three times as long as normal rechargeables and they have a lifetime of many multiple times more. They're made for photography. I primarily bought them for my flash equipment, but they work in everything, remotes, any kind of devices. They have AAA, AA, all the popular sizes, awesome batteries. A little expensive up front, but buying in bulk really helps you save. Anyway, I'll program the new lock when uh, I find the batteries and I fix the striker plate. Turned out the perfect alignment was found by buying another striker plate and putting it over top of the other one. It was just the right thickness to move things where I need it from the little catch lip. That was just the thickness I needed. And there's enough clearance here depth wise where it still doesn't hit anything. And now we get a perfect seal into the weather stripping and no more bugs crawling underneath and around the door. There was even one squished inside the jam there. No more heat leaking out. Look at that, no daylight. Perfect seal, that was easy. Okay, so I'll program the rest of the remote, Chloe's helping, after I get power. So a ton of you are telling me that the upside down sockets mean that these are controlled by the light switch. Got one there, one there. That would kind of make sense for here at least. End table with a light on it or something. Is that upside down? No, that's not. That's not, that's not. Chloe's not. <laughs> She's helping me paint, aren't you? Well, okay, you're just sitting there looking cute. Okay, so we've got two upside down in here. That's not, is there one behind here? Yeah, that's not. All right, so we got the switch here. <laughs> the only thing I have to test is a watch winder. I've got nothing else that I can find that plugs in. So, okay, this one, ah, one-handed here. Let me set this down. This should just be working. And it is, okay. So let's try this socket over here. Where do I have the switch at? Switch is off, so it should not work. Over here in this one. Okay, let me turn the switch on. Kind of odd that those two would be the ones. Switch is on and okay. Huh, that's really weird. Um, you know what, let me go around, turn the switch off, and I'll test all the rest of the sockets and see if really just those two are the ones controlled. Very strange. Uh, I'm gonna use two hands, stand by. Well, that was it. Thank you very much, guys. I've never had a house new enough that did that. Never heard of it before, but now I know, and knowing's half the battle. So Chloe says, let's get a nest, right, Chloe? So here are the two nests. Got the original up here, and this is the new E1, the, the cheaper one. And it does most of the same features, still has the same learning and all that kind of good stuff. But you can see there's a very obvious display difference. This is not only lower resolution, but it's got a frosted effect. I think it looks like crap. I mean, it's just day and night difference. It's also plastic, this is metal. Turn the metal on, that feels really nice. Yeah, I know, better. it's just... You, you put them side by side and nobody would buy this. It's only like 50 bucks cheaper. So, original it is, third generation. This is a new one? Yeah, that's a new cheap one. End of another day. We left at 5.30. It is 8.30. I hate Lowe's. Really do. But we had to go back to return the freaking rug. Because wife changed her mind. So we got two of these here for the bathroom now, so they'll go side by side until tomorrow when she wants a different one. 
Anyway, got two welcome mats to go with the one out there that's very similar on the back lanai. These will go on the side doors, guest room, and master entry. And then the one out there is slightly darker, that'll stay in the middle. I got a different trim brush that'll uh, fit my hand a lot better. I'll show you what I've accomplished inside. And I bought out another Home Depot this time of the Lutron switches. I think that will do it. I bought another 14 on Amazon, and then however many I got at Lowe's the other day. I think that's enough. We'll see. But uh, you can always buy more online for slightly more. Caught a deal. Uh, bought the guy out on Amazon. He listed them at 45 bucks. So that's like 10 bucks off each. That was a good deal. Bunch of Duracells because hell, they had a really good sale. I've got a ton of Eneloops, but they're, you know, <laughs> somewhere. So in the meantime, I want to get that smart lock going. We'll pop that in. It was only 10 bucks for however many are in there. One, two, three, four, I don't know, 20. It's a good deal. Whole bunch of blank plates to cover up all the stuff I'm taking off. Whole bunch of the brackets that I need for the drawers. And I just realized, oh yeah, there are screws. I didn't see any in there. Just realized I might need screws, but got all of those in there. And my last fifth smoke detector. Air filters, three packs of both sizes that I need for the units. I think they're very dusty. I was up on the ladder doing some uh, prep for the painting and holy moly, uh, that one there goes in the master suite and it is caked. So switching those out tonight. And after I put the smart lock on, I looked at our handle, which is this similar style. Well, let me go show you. Wow, and I just noticed that you see that underneath the lock. Hopefully there's some extra red paint around the house there. There are some paint cans. I got to check though, because that's no bueno. Got to take care of that. But anyway, we look down here and I, I just glanced at it and I thought it was like patina. No, it's just really worn. Looks like crap. That's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> so we got one that matches the style there. Much better. So that will complete the front door. And... Well, let's see what I got done for painting. Now let me preface this with, I am not a painter. I'm terrible at it and I hate doing it, but I got quotes of 4,500 bucks to paint the house. So I'm a painter. Started to do the trim and I started here in the laundry room. I was going to do the master suite and then I thought, you know what? Maybe I should practice where it doesn't matter so much. So I started right here behind the appliances and quickly picked up the technique. I can do verticals pretty well actually. And of course cutting under things, no problem. But then I tried the baseboard. Oh my God. Well, number one, I have to lay down to see anything. Extremely uncomfortable. I was using the kitchen mat there as a, a knee pad. I just can't control the paint. I mean, I was getting little blobs and runs and it was plowing in front of the brush and I tried all kinds of different techniques. I just couldn't get a nice, easy, solid paint line. So I gave up and from now on, I'm just taping all the bottom surfaces. So taping sucks, but you know what? It's better than having imperfect lines like this here. Now luckily no one's ever gonna see those because they're right here behind the washer dryer, but everything else people are gonna see. So that has to be perfect. And uh, I still have to finish because the wife got home and we ran out to the store. Everything up there, because everything left, I need the ladder for. Because I can't reach it. That's the limit of my reach with the brush. Got another, I don't know, four feet, three and a half feet. And then just the ceilings. And then I'll just quickly roll this and that will call it for tonight. Because it's dark and uh, there aren't any lights in the master suite yet. <laughs> now in here, Let's see, it's, it's looking darker than it really is on camera. It's a lighter gray. Let me see if I can adjust the exposure here. Oh, I can. Uh, that, that's, come on. That's closer. I can't tell if that actually changed it much or just made it super bright. Oh, okay, Ooh, yeah, right there. Look at the gray only. Oh, it's shifting, hold on. Let me try this. Yeah, right about there. That's what it looks like in real life. I've got my phone about three-quarter brightness. I know, it's kind of tough to tell you. Oh crap. 
I forgot to speckle these. Well, see, this is why it's practice, practice room. <laughs> and I did spend a couple hours repairing, spackling, pulling out anchors, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff to the rest of the house. Back to auto exposure. And I'm not even done, but oh, I missed that spot up there too. I guess I'll have to figure out the back and forth brush technique because some of that looks like it just went down strokes. Missed a little bit there too. It was really tough getting in these spots in here because I didn't want to glob this, of course, but the brush isn't too much narrower than the gap, and this one was even worse. I had to like squish the brush against the, the wall here. That's why I got the other smaller brush because there's even tighter spots than that I have to do. Okay, so that's gonna complete the rundown so far. I'll get this rolled tonight and uh, show you what that looks like and we'll wrap it up. Almost there. All right, so I've learned a few things, not quite done here. One is I need to paint six inches of trim. That's about, I don't know, two to three up there now and the roller does not quite get up there. Two, I need more practice cutting in ceilings. Ah, so frustrating. I do not have the patience for this crap. Luckily, I've got ceiling paint to touch up, so I'll do that after everything is done, but you can see those three big marks there. And man, it's just, even in the spots there where I thought I was doing really well, looking at it from down here, it's like my heartbeat. I mean, I have the same problem holding cameras, but I can brace myself holding cameras, but you know, trying to drag that brush, it, that's what you get. Focus, there you go. So I'm gonna try to find some kind of guard or guide, even if it's like making a, uh, something out of a box, you know, just to put it up there. I don't know, maybe there's some kind of product. I've used those actual edger tools and man, they just make a mess. They just end up dripping paint everywhere and they still get some paint on the ceiling and recharging them is just such a pain in the butt. If you put too much on it, it just globs everywhere as soon as you touch anything. So I'm going to stick with using a brush, but I do not want to have to tape the ceiling. Edges, no problem. Got those done. The, here's the other thing. Uh, it's still wet, but I'm going to wait until tomorrow to see if all the marks go away. All you're seeing there is just the roller marks and the varying degrees of dryness. And it actually looks like that to my naked eye. It's just how it dries. It gets lighter as it dries. So right now I'm going to bring back the ladder, set it all up, at least get the first coat done. This is the ultra premium paint, can't remember the name of it, but it's the one at Lowe's with the primer built in. It's one coat, blah, blah, blah. And I've used the same stuff from Bear at Home Depot, and it does go on in one coat and goes over just about any color in one coat, but those darn roller marks are what gets me. So hopefully they go away. That would be really nice, but I doubt they will. I'm, I'm betting on having to do two coats, and I bought paint to do two coats, so we'll see. The other thing I learned is uh, painting in a huge tall room with not that much depth really sucks because you end up having to do basically two walls. I need the extension to get up to there, but I can't use the extension to do below here because it bumps into the wall. <laughs> so you end up having to do basically two rooms worth of stuff. And I forgot to move my drop cloth and did get a few little spots here on the tile, but luckily it wipes right up. Although I also learned it doesn't wipe up so easily if you wipe it into the grout. So tip there. Do not ever get the paint in the grout. Wipes off the tile, not the grout. Pain in the butt to clean that up. All right, so I'm gonna finish this up and we'll see tomorrow if all these marks go away or not. And if not, this will be the first thing tomorrow. See ya. Well, there's another thing I learned. Looking at it from up here on the ladder, uh, definitely going to need a second coat in here, and I'm going to have to learn to use more paint. This texture is so thick, and I'm using a big 3 8 inch, 3 8 or 3 quarter? No, it's not 3 quarter. 3 8 inch, might have been a half. Now I can't remember. Anyway, a big thick nap roller for heavy texture, and it's still not getting good coverage. 
you can see it's uh, it's spotty. So this is where I came up and applied, and then you know by the next downstroke, it's already soaked it up. So I'll, it, I can't see it from down there either because you know it, it just blends in. But definitely need a second coat up here. It does look like the roller marks are going away pretty quickly, but need more practice.